It's just fun to say Reverend Storm is representing <laughs> hell. That's just kind of interesting. And if you just tuned in, uh, pay attention. Um, Reverend Howard Storm, you're right. Uh, you were an agnostic. You an were atheist. an atheist. atheist. Yeah. What's the difference again? I didn't believe in God. I, I um, thought anybody that believed in God was an idiot. Okay. Uh, look into the well, camera and uh, and nice. and t talk to the people that are watching right now that think we're all idiots. <laughs> talk to them. How did you used to think? Talk to them. I, um, any of you that don't believe in God, I just want you to know that I love you. Um, a lot of people here tonight love you. God loves you, yes. and um, we're not going to hold it against you that you're ignorant. Um, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And I was a college professor. I was an arrogant son of a gun, to yeah. put it mildly. Yeah. Um, I had believed that man was the measure of all things. And brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that if you don't believe in God, that doesn't mean you don't have a God. You've got a God. And your God is you. You think you're God. And you've got the puniest most worthless God there is, wow. yourself, brother. And it's about time you got straightened out! <laughs> <laughs> there is... Okay. There is a higher power. Go ahead. There's a higher power. Good. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Okay, let me clarify one thing. You're not mad at me, right? <laughs> no? You're, you, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the good guys. Love. I'm saying that out yeah. of love. I am. Okay. I, I would go out and I would go out. I'd give my life for my brothers and sisters if they could come to know how good God is. Okay. But you were just like them. The, the, yeah. the skeptic that is yeah. out there viewing. They've lost their mind completely. Uh, there is no afterlife. There is no out-of-body experiences. I'm you, sorry. you were an educated college professor, and then what happened to University you? University of California, Berkeley, my alma mater. Come on now. <laughs> what, what happened to you? All of a sudden, you uh, saw what? At the age what? of 38 years old, I knew everything. I knew what was right. I knew it was true, and I had um, a medical emergency. I had perforation of the du um, duodenum. I had a hole in my stomach. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering what a do bottom was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought That's you said do bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, anyways, go ahead. and um, so to cut to the chase, um, I was looking at my body. People um, were calling me outside the room, and I went to them, and they said that I had to go with them, and. The room was security because my uh, wife was there and my body was there and my roommate was there. I was thinking, I kept saying to myself, this is crazy. I don't believe in this. It can't be happening. This I doesn't gotcha. happen. This can't be real, except that I knew that it was the realest thing I was experiencing. It's actually, it's hyper-reality. I know it's hard to explain, but yeah. it was more real than this is real. And they were saying, come with us, hurry up, we know you. And they took me on a very long journey into an ever-increasing closeness and darkness. Wow. And then um, I'm getting, like, really scared. And finally I said, I'm not going with you any further. And with that, they turned on me, and we began to fight. Now, if they had, there were a lot of them, hundreds, thousands, I don't know. If they had wanted to annihilate me, I mean, it would have been over in a few minutes. But that is not their interest. Hmm. What they want is torment. torment. They want pain. Because they are so devoid of love, so devoid of hope, so devoid of good. There is, there's nothing left in them except pain. Mm -hmm. Their pain, and they want to inflict that pain on others. And so um, I got to participate in their um, festival of pain. And um, I cannot talk about what they did because they are exquisite at debasing, tormenting, demeaning, and destroying you. And the physical pain does not begin to measure up to the psychological, emotional pain. Wow. Of tearing down every ounce of ego and pride and hope that you have. And um, this, when people talk about hell, hell isn't like this or that. If you had a thousand books of a thousand pages describing hell, 
It would only touch the surface of all the exquisite torments of hell. You mentioned Dante earlier. That it's but a tiny glimpse of what hell is. You know, people say, well, in your experience, you were in darkness and torment and stuff like that. And I said, yeah, that's an aspect of hell. This, this, for every type of alienation from God, for every type of hatred of God, for every type of rejection of God, um, in whatever form that takes, there's a hell wow. for that. Wow. And there are, if you, I hate the expression, but kindred spirits, they're waiting for you inviting you, taking you, instead of the angels meeting people in a world of light and all that loveliness, there's people of darkness waiting for you to take you to be part of their world. How do you get more real than, I'm here, I can feel, touch? People, people ask me, was it like a dream? And I said, no, this is the dream. Yes. Yeah. You, know, you know there's an um, unreal quality to a dream. Like sometimes when you dream, you're going, this is a weird dream. I think I want to wake up now. Right, you, know? yes. I mean, you, you know that the dream is an illusion. Mm -hmm. um, the near-death experience, your, your senses, your understanding, your comprehension is all so much heightened. Yeah, so you can taste heightened. more, see more, feel more, hear more, yeah. know more. Yeah. You're just like... It's so much more intense, you're going like, life is like a dream. Because right now, this is what we know. This is our measure of what is true, what is real. But the fact of the matter is, is that we were created by God to be spiritual beings. We, our purpose is to be with God forever. That's what God created us for and what God wants. Okay. To live with God forever as spiritual beings. So God in his infinite wisdom has given us this experience of the physical world to prepare us to choose what we want to do for eternity. Wow. And it's our choice. You know, God is not in the punishment business. No. God is in the love business. Yes. People yeah. choose hell. <laughs> Millions of people are going to hell because they refuse to love God. Amen. They reject God. Okay. And, it's, and it's horrible. And that's why I'm here. That's why I came here tonight from the other side of the United States, to tell people to choose God. Okay. How, how, did, how did that change your life? When you oh, came man. back into your body, <laughs> what was the... Every, everything. And I, was, I, was, I wept for days and weeks because I was like, okay, where am I going to begin rebuilding my life? I, you know, okay, I've got to give up the booze. I've got to give up the cigarettes. I've got to give up the womanizing. I've got to give up the lying. I've got to give up the, the pursuit of power. I've got to give up the, the need for fame. You know, I, on and on and on and on and control, you know, and raging and stuff like that. All that stuff's got to go. Where do I begin? How do I love people? I started, everybody I've met, I'm sick in the hospital, really, really sick. And everyone I met, I'm like, I love you. <laughs> I, Jesus, Jesus. You know, and they're like, and they're going like, back, 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 go away, go away. You know, and, and then I started reading, and then when I got my eyesight back and started reading them, because I lost my eyesight, so when I got my eyesight and started reading the Bible, then I became a Bible-thumping zealot, and I lost everybody, everybody in the world, you know, because I would, I would thunder read the Bible, and I figured if they wouldn't believe me, if I read the Bible loud enough and strong enough, you know, and I had a pretty big voice as teacher, you know, I could get it through them. It didn't work. It worked out wow. real bad, turned wow. everybody off. And it was church, it was at church, you know, um, helping the uh, teenagers in Sunday school and stuff like that, and um, participating in worship, and... You know, I'm taking the kids on uh, camping trips and stuff like that where I started working in a soup kitchen where I started to learn that it's, it's like living it, not mm. preaching it. What you used to be was someone that uh, would have tuned into a program like this and said, okay, everyone in the audience that's all, you know, made up, these stories are made up, you're trying to get ratings. Is that how you would have perceived it or would you have you've just said... Everyone on that set and everyone in that studio are crazy. How, how, you know, would, you have, how would you have perceived this I, program? I know that there is an interest in God in everyone, even if they say they don't believe in God. Even with you? Yeah. Before and that, the event? And there's a battle going on, raging on inside of them. But I want to I say something that in response to this. Don't believe you. Don't believe Don. Don't believe me. Don't believe TBN. Don't believe the church. Go to the source. If you go to the source, if you say, Jesus, I need you. 
I've never believed in you, and I don't know if you're real, but Jesus, I need to know if you're real. Will you come into my life? If you do that, and if you mean it from your heart, and if you sit there and wait, and don't get all frustrated and get impatient and stuff like that, but just say, Jesus, Jesus, please come into my life. I've been a rotten person. And I don't know why you touch a piece of filth like me, but please, Jesus, come into my life, which is what I did. He will come. Yes. You know, it may not be. <laughs> no. Why didn't you do that before your experience? I didn't know. I wish some idiot like me or you or Don had come and said, you know what? You know what? All this philosophical speculation that you're doing all the time between existentialism and all this stuff, you know, why don't you just ask him if he's real? Wow. Mm, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's Absolutely. Beautiful. So that's, that's all it would have taken? Yeah, because I, be I, I really believe that he would have done something. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, not, not necessarily going to be struck by lightning or run over by a truck or it, it, it may just be, as uh, John Wesley said, the strange warming of the heart mm -hmm. when you just know that you know that you know that you know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> One of the little pieces of your story, you called on God in that kind of out-of-body experience? Yeah. You find, find that's a pretty fortunate situation. I mean, you well, got to... Well, I think I, I have to give credit to a woman whose name I don't know and whose face I can barely remember, no. <laughs> who taught a Snotty Lord's little kid in Sunday school, Jesus loves me, this wow. I know. Wow. And that's what came to me in that horrible, hellish place of darkness and torment was that memory. But more importantly, it came to me that when I was a little boy, I was convinced that that was true, that there was this really cool guy named Jesus who did love me. And I used to pray to him, and I used to believe in him, but as a teenager, you know, I just went astray. Wow. So I give her the credit. So that is really what came to you in this out-of-body experience. You were in a hospital, you flatlined, you died, and you left your body. Yeah. And boy, do I love to be part of Vacation Bible Schools. Because oh, we, we get kids who have never heard of oh, Jesus yeah. except as a cuss word. You know, and, sure. it's, and you get to tell them about Jesus and you see their little eyes light up. You know, wow, it's cool. <laughs> You're the sweetest guy. <laughs> I, it's just amazing. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm glad I met you after the experience. <laughs> because... I mean, I'm talking to Jesus. He's telling me about heaven. And I was like, you know, that's a no-brainer. You want to yeah. go there. And... Uh, and he persuaded me that that wasn't going to happen and I needed to come back and do a little... Uh, oh, and get er, right. Yeah, get right. Don and I know we're going to heaven. And there is nothing in the world, no power that can stop that from happening. Not because Don and I are good people. We're not good people. Matter of fact, Don and I are here to tell you that we are sinners. Hmm. And that all people, and us especially, deserve to go to hell. But we have put our hope, our faith, and trust in a man who was sent by God 2,000 years ago who said, I will come and take you to where I am. I have prepared a place for you. Wow. He said that, and it's written down in a book, the book of John. He will come because he loves us, and he knows our faults, and he knows we're not worthy, and he knows you're not worthy, and he will take you there. And he has paid the price of all the rotten stuff we've done. Wow. All the bad things he's done, he's, it's covered because he's a just God. And he wants us to be with him because he loves us. We are his children. He made you. He made your mind. He made your hair. He made your face. He made your life. And he just wants you to trust him and he will take care of you for all of eternity. Amen. Ask him mm -hmm. to come into your heart. You don't have to experience anything big, but it'll grow. And you will know that nothing can keep you from heaven and from the arms of Jesus Christ. 